Okay, look, this may not be any easier to understand, but this is it in Webflow. Okay, look, basically I've made the whole top area into an object that I can drag and drop onto any page. So this whole top area with the logo and these other things to do with search and, and admin and everything, and the menu itself can be dragged and dropped onto any page, right? But inside that, there's all the content of this top area. Okay, look, there's a container here which is just containing all this top guff. But then this is the menu, right? Now, I start off by dragging in a section. And as you know, a section is just a, 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 a sort of span that spans the entire width of the browser, okay? It's just a section that can contain any part of the page and all the content inside it and it could be dragged and moved around into any position you want vertically on the page relative to other sections right okay so start with a section inside it I put a regular container okay and the container is in its default block element okay all right and a container as you know it's just a container it always defaults to the width of the desktop right and centers so if the browser is wider this contains everything to the width set by desktop and anything outside that just goes off to the edges, right? Okay, so there's a section spanning the whole page. Inside it is a regular container and inside that I put a divide. This is a regular divide set to a block element. Now I happen to have given it a, a left padding of 10. That's just to push all the menu stuff slightly in a bit from the left. The main thing is this divide, which lives inside the container, which I've called the menu wrapper, it's got a position of relative, right? It doesn't have a Z index, and it's relative to itself, the default, okay? Nothing else is relevant, okay? Now, it's what's inside that. So this wrapper is a divide set to relative, fit set to default fill, block element. Inside that is the actual menu blocks. And there's three of them. One, two, three. Because I've only got three drop-down menus. These two are just regular hyperlinks men hyperlink menu items. That, yeah, they just open a page when you click on them. And that's just a vertical line dividing these regular hyperlink menu items from these three drop-down ones. So there's three of them. One, two, and three. So what I did was... I got the section, put a container in it, put a wrapper in it, which spans the entire width and everything of, of the container it lives inside of. That wrapper, which is a regular divide, is set to relative. And then inside it, I put a regular divide. Right? Regular divide. Width auto, I set the height to 40 pixels, which is establishing the height of my menu. I happen to have given that divide a padding all around of 10, just to pad it, that's my taste, and I've given it a right margin of 10. Again, that's my taste, and it pushes the next one across as far as I want it to go to the to the right, okay? I've also set it, and that's my taste again, to align all its content to center. So it's a regular divide, but it's a inline block, okay? Inside that is a straightforward text with the actual title of the menu. Okay, which we'll set to whatever font and all the rest of it. But the color, although I've set a color here, the color, well, the color's there being inherited. Um, the color's being inherited from the actual, uh, I've set it to the, um, the divide is, the color for the divide, font color, is the same as the color for the, the text. But yeah, I don't know. That makes any difference, but whatever. But we'll, we'll see because there's a hover thing at the end. Okay, so that's all it is. I made the first menu block, right, inside the wrapper, which is inside the container. Okay, and that's a simple divide set to inline block. And inside it is simple text with the actual title of that menu block. All right? And I called that block 1A. Then I copied it and pasted it, right, changed the text to be the title of the next menu item and called it 2A. 
Then I copied and pasted that and made a third one, changed the title of the text, just retyped what I wanted it to be called, and called that 3A. So I had three of them, 1A, 2A, and 3A. Then what I did is I got 1A and I copied it and pasted it underneath itself. I pasted the copy of 1A underneath itself and called it 1B. So 1A, I made a copy of it, pasted it underneath. It's identical to 1A, it's the same text, exactly the same position, but it's called 1B and it is hidden. Then I did the same with number 2A. I copied it, pasted that copy of itself underneath itself. It's identical text, identical position, everything. Called it 2B and it's hidden. And the same with 3A. I copied it, it, pasted it under itself. So I have an identical copy of 3A. Same position, same text, called it 3B, and it's hidden. So each of these has a copy that's hidden. 1A has a B copy that's hidden, 2A has a B copy that's hidden, and 3A has a B copy that's hidden. Okay. Now there's three many blocks in total, so there have to be three drop down areas. There's the first, second, and third one. They're just called like content one drop down content one two and three and they're all hidden obviously by default you don't want them visible now these are just regular divides okay but they're set to position absolute overflow hidden i happen to have given them a width of slightly more than 100 percent, 102 percent so i just wanted the menu to slightly be wider than the wrapper that the menu lives in all right that's that's me okay but the main thing is it the drop down is a divide Right, set to the regular default there a block with its position absolute now it has a z index of three relative to the drop down wrapper that divide inside the container that the whole menu lives in okay you can give it whatever color you want blah 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 the height i haven't set a height for it the height's determined by whatever the content is and in it you can put whatever you like so it's a straight divide right there are three of them one for each menu block that you can click on and they're all hidden by default okay and that's it that's how it's made okay but it's the, it's about the interactions and this is this is how it works all the a blocks have the same interactions or the first three interactions are the same for all the a blocks so 1a and all the interactions are on first click when you click on 1a it shows its content area the drop down appears it hides its own A block and the third action is it shows its own B block. Okay, It's the same for 2A. On, these are all on first click. It shows its content error, drop down content error underneath. It hides its A state block. 2a and shows its b state block 2b and it's the same with 3a you click on it put all these are all first click again it shows or drops down its content area 3 it hides its own 3a block and shows its own 3b block okay they all do that so every single single one of the a blocks when you click on them they show their content area, one, two, or three, hide their own A block, and show their own B block. But they all also do something else. 1A shows its content, hides its A block, shows its B block, shows the A block for the other two, number two and three, and hides the B block for the other two, two and three. Also hides the content in case it's open for the other two, number two and three. Number two, A, shows its own content when you click on it, hides its A block, its own A block, shows its own B block, shows the A block for the other two, number one and three, hides the B block for the other two, that's number one and three, and hides the content in case it's open for the other two, content one and three. And the third A block, same thing shows its own content hides its a block shows its b block shows the a block for the other two number one and, th and two 
hides the B block for the other two, one and two, and hides the content for the other two, content one and two, in case they're open. That's how it works. Okay. Now the B blocks have way less interactions. There's one B. When you click on a B block, it can only hide its drop down menu. So it does that. If you click on one B, it hides content one. And it <coughs> switches, it, it shows its own A block and turns itself, its B block off. Okay. 2B hides its content, switches its A block on and hides its B block itself. 3B hides its own content, number three, shows its A block and hides itself, its B block. And the reason it has to be done this way is everything has to be on first click. A blocks can only open the menu. B blocks can only close their own menu. And it has to be done that way because if you use first and second click, it wouldn't work. Like if, if we use first and second click, first click opens menu, second click closes the menu. Let's say I click on this menu. Boom, fine. I first clicked on this menu. It's opened its own thing. On second click, it will close its own menu. But what if I go over and open that menu? And I want to go back and show that menu. Well, this is in its, it's already been first clicked. It's sitting waiting for its second click, which can only close its menu. So if I went and tried to open this menu, it wouldn't open. It would just, it would just do nothing. So it has to be done that way, right? A blocks can only open and B box can only close their menu. But when you click on an A block, it puts all the others into an A state ready to open their menu and closes their menus in case they're open and switches itself to B so that when it's clicked, it closes its own menu. And that's it. That's the logic. That's the Boolean logic that's, that's, that's really, really hard to work out. And I don't know that showing this in Webflow will make that much difference. It's about getting your head around that Boolean logic. I mean, look, I code database Boolean logic database. So like, I'm, I've spent years like working on these problems of if that is a then that is on and that is off and that is yes and that is no then this will happen or that will happen whatever you know that's just what it is um but it took some working out but it has to be done that way because first and second click can't work i mean i tried doing it that start with and then soon ran into that problem like oh hang on i've clicked on that menu it's been first clicked if I click on it again, it can only close its own menu, which means you can't skip between the menus. You know, the only way first and second click can work is if you only go open, close, open, close, open, close. But what you can't do is go open, 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 and go back to any of these two and click them to open because they're now in, they're waiting for their second click and they can only close, so they won't open their own menu. Has to be done that way, right? Okay, now finally, the hover thing is, you know, each of these menu blocks in a state, they've got the default text color. Okay, and the hover obviously happens, look, it's not when I go over the text, it's when I go over the block. So the hover is not for the text inside the block, inside the divide, it's for the divide itself. So there's the block, there's the first one. 1A, the divide, and if we look at it, and we go to, there's the font color set there, which is a sort of dark, dark, dark gray, and if I go to on hover, it's red, right? So that hover action to make the text change red is, is coming from the divide, and the text inherits it inside, right? Now, the other thing is, when I click on this, it's active and stays red, and the other two have the hover thing this is staying red because when i click on it it turns off the a block and switches on its own b block and its b block the font color for that divide is set to red right. so that's how that works right the last thing is the mask 
I mean, you don't have to use it, but I thought it was quite cool. Tub of Mars. When you click, everything dulls down. Right? When you turn any of the minis off, it, it goes back to normal. Right? So the mask is simply. <clears throat> look, if we collapse this like all remember all of this including the menu is 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 an object there and the mask lives directly below it on every page and it's hidden right so <clears throat> that's the object with all the top stuff including the menu so the mask sits directly below it and the mask is a regular divide switch it on it's hidden by default it's a regular divide set to its default block it's got a height, minimum height, maximum height of 100%. So it always will fill the entire height of the page. Um, position fixed. Uh, and it's got a Z in index of three relative to the body. Right? So it will always overlay on the body. I've set the color to black and opacity to 78%. Well, you can set it to whatever you like to dull down the background as much as you want. Right. Um, yeah, position fixed. I don't think any of these are active. Are they? No. Let me undo that. If it's active, it would be dark. So none of these are activated. These. It just says fixed. Set bit to fill default. And below that, this is auto zero percent, zero percent, zero percent. Um, is flame clear doing anything? No, that's all. No. Okay, so that's how the mask works. I mean, how the mask is built, but it's set by default to hidden. And then if you go back to the actions, right, all the A blocks when they drop their menu down, look at the actions. The very last action is they turn the mask on, and the B blocks. The very last action on first click is they turn the mask off. And that's that. Okay. And that's how it works, man. It's um I don't know if that makes any more sense because yeah, I've shown you like I've shown you how it's built, but you still gotta kinda get your head around that Boolean logic problem to sort of grasp it, but um But that's how it works anyway. Alrighty.